the tale that begins the second section of Dancing with Tombstones, uh, which the section is called Psychos, I'm a little bit obsessive compulsive. And I just took that idea. And I, I mean, I'm not bad. I don't wash my hands 50 times a day. But very often I'll get caught up in the roundabout of, you know, I iron stuff up here. And then, you know, as I'm about to leave to teach a class, I, I turn the coffee pot off. And then I, I think to myself, wait a minute, did I unplug the iron? And then I come back upstairs and I unplug the iron. But I was thinking about that, and then I'm on my way out, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, did I unplug the coffee pot? And I, I do that song and dance a couple of times, embarrassingly. Uh, and, I mean, I have selective obsessive-compulsive disorder. Um, like, if I touch a window shade or a doorknob, I've got to wash my hands. But I could be, you know, I could have a pickle barrel behind home plate, and I'm catching, you know, my son practicing pitching, and I'll dust off the plate and lick my fingers, and I won't think twice about it. Um, so I've, I kind of have a condition that's part-time. Uh, and in, in this story, uh, which is called Puddles, uh, it's about a woman who I modeled after my late mother uh, named Doris Wadowitz. And she is obsessive-compulsive and thinks the back alley you know, where she lives, where she puts her trash out. She hates the idea of stepping in a puddle. It just makes it so she has to change her clothes, she has to shower, the whole nine yards. And that story is about how she steps in a puddle out there and the puddles follow her into the house. The second story in the psychos section of dancing with tombstones is called the exterminator uh and that was one of the stories that i did to fill out from five deadly pleasures to seven deadly pleasures um the first one i talked about earlier which is how bria died but st joshi wanted another story so we could have seven deadly pleasures and i had never written a scary clown story before and I gave it a shot. Um, and interestingly, and I'll say it again, uh, this has always been one of my personal favorites about, you know, a regular guy named Evan who starts seeing clowns. And then he figures he's got to get rid of the clowns because it's like an infestation. And then what's the best way to get rid of them than to become one? And I, the story always tickled me. I, I always thought it was funny in a way. Uh, funny, ironic, funny, ha-ha. Really gross. You know, the whole nine yards. Kind of beautiful, violent, uh, almost poetic, uh, I would hope. And Lynn Hansen, the artist who did the cover of Dancing with Tombstones, who made the clown in my likeness, did it as sort of like a tribute to that story. And again, I have to thank Lynn uh, for the cover and for, and for everything you know that that she did for me to make this story and this collection stand out. The third story in the psychos section uh, of Dancing with Tombstones, the collection, is a story that I uh, that is special to me, uh, and it's sort of similar to. The Girl Between the Slats, where that's special to me because of the technical structure. This one was the only story that I ever wrote that scared me a little bit, and it goes way back. I wrote this in 1993. Uh, it's called Quest for Sadness, and it's a devil story. And most movies don't scare me, but The Exorcist did when I first saw it. And this was the one story where I wrote about the devil. Uh, and I, I still remember it was 1993 and um, we were off from work because it was a snowstorm and it was in March. It was one of those weird late snowstorms and my wife somehow made it into work and I was alone uh, in the house and I wrote it in one sitting. I mean, it's a short, short story. I don't know how many pages it is, how many words, it may be 4,000 words. <clears throat> But I wrote it about a guy who is told he's the devil and he does everything he can to prove that he's not. 
and the more he does, the more he proves that he is. And again, this was the only one, and not a long-term thing, I wasn't scared about it night after night, but it gave me that moment when I did the last word where not only did I know I nailed the ending, but it gave me a shiver. 